When the gastric bypass is done, it's also done with little incisions in the TV camera. One important part of the surgery is using our surgical stapler to cut across the upper stomach and to create this very small stomach pouch. And momentarily during surgery, there's nowhere for the food to go, but don't worry, there is a plan. And so the next part of the plan is that we take a section of the small intestine from the middle abdomen where it normally lives, and we bring it up either behind or in front of the colon, behind or in front of the stomach, and we attach it onto this little stomach pouch so that there's a new pathway for the food. So the food's going to come down the esophagus into the little stomach pouch, and it's going to go down this intestine, and it's going to bypass this section of the stomach and the duodenum. That's important. We'll come back to that in a minute. But it's going to bypass those structures and come on down here. Now, there is a place for digestive juices. The digestive juices are made in this part of the stomach and in the bile duct and also the pancreas, which the artist did not include. But those digestive juices come in here. The digestive juices flow in this part of the intestine. There's a connection here. And so the food's coming this way and the digestive juices are coming here so that there's normal absorption downstream. One interesting feature of the gastric bypass, even though it looks a little bit more complicated, is that nothing is removed. All of the parts are still there. It's more of a reorganization of the food flow. Now, I know from looking at this diagram with patients over the years that questions come up about this section of the stomach. It looks like it might be floating or it might uh, twist or fold or something weird might happen to it. But here, the artist has oversimplified a bit, understandably. And what the artist did not include is lots of blood vessels along this edge and blood vessels along this edge. Those blood vessels keep that stomach healthy with oxygen and nutrients. And they also hold that stomach in place so that it does not move around. And in fact, it's interesting, we mess with those blood vessels very little as we just cut across this upper part of the stomach. The other thing I've learned that patients wonder about is um, this part of the colon is shaded out here. And, and this does not mean that we're doing anything to the colon. It just means that they, sh oops, they just shaded out the colon so that you could see what's happening with the small intestine because some surgeons bring the intestine up behind the colon and the artist wants you to be able to see that. So again, nothing happening to the colon, no risk factors with the stomach that's been bypassed. So as I said, in this gastric bypass anatomy, there's a tiny little stomach pouch that doesn't hold much food, and that is an important factor in weight loss, but there is also an important hormonal factor. Now in the sleeve, we talked about the hormone benefit from removing the stomach, and I just told you that in the gastric bypass, that stomach is still there, and it's healthy, and it's in the same place. So I want to give you an explanation about what's happening hormonally with the gastric bypass. It's a little bit complicated, but stick with me. So the story begins with actually normal anatomy, not surgical anatomy. So no gastric bypass, no sleeve. And it turns out that part of how the um, hormone balance gets out of control is because of the food passing through this normal section, the duodenum. And what I'm describing to you is what we call the foregut theory or the upper gut theory of gastric bypass and obesity. So it turns out that this section of the intestine is densely lined with cells that sense food and assess food. And then this section is also networked with the surrounding organs through neurologic connections and hormonal connections. It's networked so that it's supposed to help the body respond in real time in a healthy, appropriate way to the food that you take in. But people that have this obesity disease, when food hits the duodenum, very often it causes the body to overreact or misreact to food. And so people can actually feel a lack of satisfaction or even feel hunger just after they ate. Now, not all of my patients have this experience, but many do. And for many, this is still happening on an unconscious level in the sense that the body sees the food come in. Food may even stimulate more hunger, and that's coming from the passage of food through this section here. So when we do the gastric bypass and the food travels this different pathway straight down here, and it does not go through this section, the duodenum, then the system is uh, kind of taken offline. It's allowed to calm down a little bit and other backup hunger mechanisms take over that are sort of more accurate or more healthy for the body in the long run. So the gastric bypass, once again, has a powerful impact with the smaller stomach, but an even more powerful direct hormonal impact with reduced hunger so people don't want as much food. For those of you who are watching and are my science and physiology nerds, I feel compelled to let you know that what I'm saying with the 
ghrelin and hormone removal on the sleeve and with the foregut theory on gastric bypass, um, these are probably just part of the story and um, they may not even be the full story and science is going to take many years to develop an accurate picture, um, but it's fair to say that these are accurate representations of how people feel with a restriction on the amount of food they can eat and a smaller desire for food. Uh, in fact, there are probably many different hormonal underpinnings for this obesity disease. In other words, people probably have the obesity condition for different reasons across the spectrum. Um, and there are definite physiologic changes that go on with both the sleeve and the gastric bypass that I did not mention in those earlier discussions. For example, uh, both operations involve healthy transitions in the colon microbiome. That's the normal bacterial contents of the colon from an unhealthy balance to a healthy balance. Balance. Similarly, both of them involve healthy changes in the bile salt composition. Um, people who suffer from the obesity condition have an unhealthy mix of bile salts that transitions to a more healthy mix in the context of both the sleep and the gastric bypass. Those things may or may not turn out to be key factors for all patients, maybe some patients. Um, and many of these changes are happening over a matter of millimeters and centimeters within the bloodstream, the bloodstream of the intestine, the portal system, or they may be happening in the nerve system because the whole intestinal system has its own sort of like second brain. Um, and so I think the research to elucidate these mechanisms is going to take many years.